to order. So good evening, good afternoon, actually. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm calling this meeting to order. And today we do have uh, two items on the agenda and we will start with our first item, which is the Sound Transit Strategic Plan. Hi, Jim, thank you for Hello. joining us. All right, thank you, uh, Council President Perez and good evening to everyone. Uh, let me first start by sharing uh, the presentation. Get scroll to the right place here. And uh, this discussion, of course, uh, comes with the new challenges presented by the COVID-19 outbreak and its impact on the economy, in particular for Sound Transit uh, sales tax revenue, which accounts for 60% of its operating proceeds. Uh, hopefully, though, there will be also uh, new opportunities with the CARES Act enacted by Congress, which provides the state of Washington about $700 million in uh, federal transit administration uh, grants, of which uh, Sound Transit is expected to receive about $170 million. That's something we'll get more details upon, and hopefully some of that revenue can be used for some of our priorities here in Linton as well. Uh, with that, let me uh, go to our priorities uh, that we're working on with Sound Transit. And first of all, uh, to the I-405 BRT-related issues, also known as STRIDE, is what the service is going to be called. And as you've heard before, we've been uh, uh, talking to Sound Transit and emphasizing the importance that this will be a light rail station in the future and we want to ensure that the station design which is only about 10 percent right now you see some conceptual pictures of it uh, to the bottom there left to the right side and uh, it's only about 10 percent now but we want them to be looking at it uh, as a future light rail station and to demonstrate that that's going to be possible to incorporate into the future uh, to date they pretty much have told us that uh, that's possible to do and have shown us some examples they've done it in south for example, uh, but we also reminded them that their initial uh, footprint uh, at some of those stations uh, ended up being too small and they had to actually take up more land. So that's why we've emphasized that this is, seems to be the time that we should be looking at uh, where the light rail is going to be going into the station so we can preserve land uh, around the station because there's currently 14 acres available public land around there. So we need to be thinking about uh, how this will be integrated into uh, the future light rail and making sure that we don't build something that's going to be in the way. Uh, there is some good news on that front, though. Is the, I think we've emphasized enough Sean Transit now that they are looking at uh, scoping the 30% design of the station, and they've uh, assured us that they will discuss incorporating some light rail planning into that. And uh, we actually can follow that also because this actual contract that they're going to be working on has to go to the Sound Transit uh, System Expansion Committee sometime in June or uh, July of this year. So we'll be following that closely. And if we can't convince staff, we'll uh, have an opportunity to go before uh, that committee uh, ourselves and, and make our case to make sure that that's incorporated into the design of the communication. Uh, moving on to the next key priority is to uh, emphasize uh, transit-oriented development around the station. They have uh, conceptual drawing there where Sound Transit will have some vacant land which they want to do a TOT development at that particular site. They want to make sure that they include Brenton's vision into that uh, TOD, not just look at a specific singular Sound Transit purpose, but look at the overall vision that the City of Brenton has for that area, uh, which is yet to be defined. Uh, the Community and Economic Development Group will be leading a planning area study for TOD uh, planning in that in this 14 acre area and also included actually even a bigger area of Renton Village all the way over to the old Sam's Club site for TOD development. Uh, so that's something that we want to emphasize uh, to Sound Transit is to make sure that they uh, participate in our process. We're also inviting Metro and, and Washdock to participate because Metro operates the park and ride, Washdock owns the park and ride. Uh, and that actually also gives us a new opportunity with WashDOT owning the park and ride. They're actually developing right now a new pilot program. Uh, they don't do a whole lot of transit oriented development currently. They're just staffing up for it. And they're doing a pilot program right now for Kirkland that we hope to uh, gain some more information about how they could help us with developing this area for transit oriented development. That's something we'll want to look at as we look at our 2021 state legislative package 
uh, what type of uh, things we should be asking the state for as far as TOD development in this particular area. Uh, also, uh, one of the other major challenges we have on this site is actually traffic. Uh, this is the only uh, station that's offline, off the I-405, rest of the inline station. So it presents challenges of getting to and from this particular station. Uh, we've been emphasizing some solutions to, to wash dot and sound transit, in particular along SR-167 as they get off the freeway. Uh, so far, uh, we haven't seen a lot of uh, uh, cooperation in some respects. We're certainly working well together, but uh, we just feel like they're just trying to minimize the adverse impacts to traffic and not really make improvements. And I think for uh, this station to be successful, we want to have it uh, you know, be a for transit riders, it's all about speed and reliability, so we need to actually make some improvements to improve the speed and reliability getting to and from the station. Uh, we are escalating this a bit uh, to higher levels within WashDOT, and even council member uh, Prince has uh, volunteered to ask uh, well, fellow board member uh, Roger Miller of WashDOT to emphasize the need for improving uh, traffic to and from the station to minimize uh, time uh, for transit riders scroll up here a bit and move on to the next station that will be developed in Renton, and that'll be the I-405 44th inline station. Uh, we really have no concerns with this one. It's certainly going to be really very nice to have an inline station at this particular location from a transportation standpoint. Uh, there are some concerns, of course, though, with the uh, need for uh, structured parking. At this point, uh, Sound Transit only has enough money to build a surface parking lot here. I think their budget was $15 million, and they recently have told us it'll be $30 million. They currently don't have the budget to actually build structured parking location. Uh, they have been working with uh, the property owner uh, at the Panabota site, which is Vulcan, and uh, trying to come up with solutions to build a, uh, a joint parking garage at this particular location to hopefully lower the cost uh, at this particular uh, location. and. Uh, at this point, it's, it's, we awaited here back from them on their joint design uh, for a joint parking garage. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that, that works out to see if it drives down the cost. The other thing we might want to pursue, though, is stimulus money uh, to make to fill the gap that the South Korean currently needs. Uh, that may be an uphill battle, but we'll have to see how that unfolds. And of course, for uh, written residents, one of the most important issues is the Sound Transit Free Light Rail Study, which is in Sound Transit's current package. Uh, and we've been emphasizing the need to start early. Uh, the main thing is to start uh, the process and have our projects in their long range plan uh, before SD4 is developed so that we can make sure that our priorities are put forward and new, new package is put forward by Sound Transit. Uh, in our last uh, conversations with Peter Rogeroff, we actually met with the mayor. He is uh, emphasizing that if we could start uh, um, potentially too early and make some uh, you know, assumptions that may not be valid by the time that they actually would South Transit 4 on the ballot. Uh, we had been thinking potentially 2024 might be the next ballot measure, but Peter Rogeroff has emphasized that it's more likely the earliest being 2028. The reason being is that uh, the South Transit 3, for example, they were uh, over 50% completed with their uh, improvements in South Transit 2 before they started the new measure. And so his planning, uh, he thought, you know, it would be too early to begin now with South Transit uh, light rail planning. Something, of course, we want uh, council members to input on and feedback and what they think of the right uh, to the road route in there. Uh, I did put together a little bit of a schedule of what this would look like if we, we follow through and, and start thinking more about 2028 as a SP4 ballot. Uh, so design would continue. Uh, we're in 2020 right now, 21, 22 would be a design. And at the same time, the uh, community and economic development department would also be uh, doing the TRD sub area planning uh, at the same time the station design is occurring. Uh, then, of course, construction would begin on the new station. And uh, for our section, the two stations we have would be completed in 2024. Uh, and all of the uh, uh, south end of Stride uh, would be operating in 2024. 
Uh, but we just recently heard from South Transit some of the north, uh, the north stride improvements, including improvements along 522 for BRT, will actually uh, be moved into 2025 and completed until then. But our particular uh, improvements will be completed up to Bell uh, by 2024. And looking at this schedule, we would start planning for the light rail study in 2025. Have a probably a two year process for that. And then there will be a South Transit long range plan update to make sure that our projects get in the plan. And then there will be a system plan that will be developed in 2028 to bring it to the voters. Now, with that, I'll just mention a few other uh, key priorities that we're working on in South Transit. Um, uh, just in this last year, uh, South Transit put together a grant program and uh, put out a call for projects for system access to a lot of these stations. Uh, we uh, submitted a uh, multi-use path along 7th to get access to the new transit station. And it actually ended up being one of the highly scored, highest scoring projects in the east side uh, for uh, this particular call for projects. We applied for over $2 million. And uh, the board elected to only give us one million to two million that we needed for that project, which we thought was uh, it was really unfair to only give us half of what uh, we asked for when other projects that were scoring less actually got their full amount. Uh, so we've been um, trying to get the additional one million dollars. Uh, board member Prince will be helping us uh, make sure that uh, the next call that they do on what's going to be the system access funds that. They're going to be another call for or specific project funds from the station that we potentially can access. But it's something we would like to make whole is that, that particular project with $14 million. So another thing that we've been emphasizing with, with South Transit and with Washington is uh, just a coordinated communication of these projects. A lot of times we've got the public uh, and we don't bring the other partners along. We've seen that in two cases with Washington and with South Transit. Uh, so we've been emphasizing to them we need to have a coordinated front to the public when we go out to the public and have a consolidated message. Otherwise, it looks somewhat disjointed if we don't do so. Uh, the other project that we want to get into that long-range plan that I talked about a little bit earlier when we looked at the schedule is the North 8 direct access ramp project. Uh, we want that into the Sound Transit uh, BRT long-range plan. And that's a project that uh, um, we have from state legislators uh, some money, about $25 million, I think it was, for a design and a right-of-way for that particular project. Uh, so we'll be looking eventually for construction funding for that direct access ramp into the landing area. Uh, so that's a key priority to make sure that's in the long-range plan so on transit. And, and then finally, is just uh, we'd like to see Sound Transit uh, become a little bit more involved in the service uh, part of the, uh, of the system. Uh, so far, most of their planning efforts have been towards building up the capital improvements, and uh, we'd like to see more coordination with the uh, local service providers through the three county region, region. And with that, uh, I think that concludes my presentation, uh, Council President Perez. Thank you, Jim. I very much appreciate this presentation. So, Council, this is uh, a a strategic, a strategic, a strategic plan uh, meeting. So uh, I will take um, any comments or questions that you have. Madam President, uh, Council Member um, Yes, I, I am. Um, this is encouraging and disappointing at the same time. <laughs> um, the. Um, the delay uh, to, to, to 2028 is kind of heartbreaking. Um, and I, I, this is kind of off the beaten path, but just from a brainstorming perspective, has, have, have we ever in the meet, so this is what would be an in the meantime kind of a question. Have we ever looked at having passenger rail on the Renton Spur? I think that had been looked at um, way back in, I think it's 1996 when they did the first sound move. I think there was some uh, talk about putting passenger rail along that particular corridor. 
Uh, it never was pursued that I'm aware of. I think mainly due to the fact that Boeing needed that for freight because of flight. They mainly did that. And there was also, at that time, they still had rails going through the Pinnedale neighborhood. And I think there was a lot of opposition to running the passenger rail along that particular corridor. Um, so if um, BNSF and, and Boeing coordinate uh, already on the um, sounder rail. <clears throat> well, I mean, sound what, transit and BNSF, yes. Yeah, I wonder if it wouldn't be worth just having a, a discussion, um, especially because that does run from our Boeing uh, facilities right past Southport, right through the landing, right mm -hmm. through downtown, and eventually makes its way all the way over to the Seattle Boeing. So, um, I just, it's just a... Oh, so just, I can bring that up. Yes, we, we definitely follow up on that. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Do any council member has a question or a comment? I count, council President Perez. Council member McKeever. Yeah, so I don't want to get bogged down too much on that uh, timing of the 2020, 2024. Uh, is that a, they've 100% decided or are they just thinking that's likely at this point? Yeah, um, more of a conversation with Peter Rogoff on kind of picking his brain from this standpoint on what's happened before and what is more likely to happen okay. than before. So it's, it's more of his opinion that since they're only like 10% to the current plan, uh, you know, by 2024, they're not going to be far enough along to where there's probably any new consideration for a new plan at that time. It, the reason I ask is I had actually heard the, the other direction, which is because you have so many stations opening in that exact same year, that that could be a benefit to running in that same year. Um, and that would be why they might pursue it that early and that there might be an appetite to be fulfilled on it. Yeah, that, that, I wasn't actually in the meeting, but that, that wasn't the conversation I don't think that Peter that wasn't the justification that he was using as far as the, it's mainly when the program is far enough along where it makes sense to start a new program because there's, there's certainly some concerns with being so early in the program to start some new projects going in. Um, and this Madam thing. President? Uh, yes, I, I, I don't recognize your voice. This is Doug Levy. I don't know if oh. I'm muted. Yeah, 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 yes, you are. You are, though. Um, so um, I was in that meeting with Mayor Pavone, and what I would share on the 2024 versus 2028 is, and I think Jim may have alluded to these percentages, but um, when Sound Transit went to voters in 2016 on the ST3 ballot, they were well over halfway through delivering all of the ST2 measures. So what, what Peter Rogoff said is that because there is so little that's been delivered from all the taxes and bonding under ST3, um, it could be very challenging to ask for additional taxes and additional bonding for an ST4 when much of the ST3 would not have been built out yet. He said, obviously, that's going to have to be a board discussion, but, um, you know, that was definitely where um, he was seeing things trending when he met with the mayor and myself and uh, Council Member Prince, I think, was briefly in that meeting as well. Madam President. Uh, Council Member Prince. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think what if we if, if sound transit went out too early and it failed because we hadn't delivered enough from SC3, it would be at a detriment to us when we're trying to get our get light rail on the ballot for uh, for us. So I think, and we'll have a conversation about it as a board probably sooner than later, and I'll make sure to keep you guys updated on it. But I honestly, and in light of everything that's happening now with COVID-19 and uh, reductions and having to go fare free, um, I think that we'll know more sooner than like we'll know more in a little bit but i wouldn't look i wouldn't look at that uh too much uh 2024 versus 2028. thank you council member prince any more questions or concerns i i 
have one more clarification I'd like to make if I could, Madam President, and that was, this is Doug Levy. Um, when, when Jim was referencing the 170 million that Sound Transit's expected to get under the CARES Act, I wanna make sure we distinguish relief from the current impacts of the outbreak versus stimulus package kinds of ideas later. So the 170 million for Sound Transit and the other transit agencies in our state is more toward relief of all of the impacts that they've taken with service going all the way down to de minimis. And um, what we would look to do with a, a future stimulus package is, I think Jim was outlining some of the things we think might make a lot of sense to work on in, in concert with council, um, the capacity needs at 167 and 405 to move um, bus rapid transit into the station the structured parking at 405 and 44th and the like. Thank you, Doc. Uh, Madam, Madam President. May Council Member Corman. Yeah, um, well, um, I, I think, I guess, uh, so I, I'm, um, you know, digesting the 2028 versus 2024, but um, but overall, I, I, I guess I appreciate that um, the Sound Transit is going to work with us to make sure that that planning occurs years prior to Sound Transit 4 going to ballot. And to me, that's the most important element of this is that we don't have a Sound Transit 4 suddenly come up on the ballot and and our, our light rail design is too immature to actually put it on the ballot. So that, that's what I really wanna avoid no matter what. Um, I think you know, as, as long as we're, as long as everybody's on the same page there and everybody understands that we need to have this planning done before, before there's, there's more um, funding for sound transit and we are part of the next measure. I'm, I'm okay with that. And I'm um, just, I just want to make, make sure we continue to work with sound transit so that we stay again, years in front of the ballot issue. Madam president. Council member Prince. And uh, uh, Randy, there's not been one conversation that I've had with the folks at Town Transit where Renton and light rail have not been a topic of conversation. So okay, it's, excellent. It's still it's still out there. All right, thanks. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Councilmember Prince, I do have a question on, and I don't know if you or Doc or, or maybe James can 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 answer this. Uh, do you have the feeling that the board of Sound Transit uh, understand pretty much that our residents and this area feel that South King County, and specifically Southeast King County and Renton were left behind during ST3? That is, I you know i can't i can't accurately answer that question because it's not been the topic of conversation um everything that we've talked about regards to sc3 has been about stuff that's right in front of us as far as the uh planning for stations and whatnot i will tell you that the first conversation i had with peter rogoff we we had a conversation about renton and light rail and how important it is to our residents and so he knows that um, as far as my other board colleagues, I'm not sure what they do or don't know. Uh, thank you, and I very much appreciate uh, your answer. Um, and the reason what I'm asking is because I, I want to know if they, they, that they will be supporting us when we bring these measures and the need and this area to, to include us this time in the future projects of the San Transit to bring equity in the regional area about transportation services? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I will tell you that I'll be working with all my colleagues. Um, I've developed a good relationship with most of them that I've met in the three months I've been on the board to make sure that, that we're not forgotten or left behind. Thank you very much. I, I pretty much appreciate this. Before I ask other questions, uh, does any other council member have any more questions? Okay, so I will bring another question, which is the first uh, uh, um, topic that you talk about, Jim, which is the, the, the area where the transit center is gonna be located. Obviously, it is uh, 
a, a key area because it's the entrance of the city of Renton and the end of the 167. And obviously, I'm very much concerned about the kind of traffic that we're going to bring to that area. Uh, you say that you have had conversations with them to help us to mitigate this. Do we have more plans specifically that we are going to be bringing to them or they are going to bring to us or studies to see what is going to be the impact of this in that area? Yeah, they're, they're doing lots of traffic studies and uh, they, the area that we're really concerned about is the area the 167 as it leads up to Brady Way coming off the freeway. And uh, as anybody that's experienced that, there's a lot of uh, people getting off the freeway and trying to weave over uh, right away, get over to the left turn lane uh, to go to areas like Walmart or just go westbound on Grady Way. And uh, we really feel like a barrier curve needs to be installed uh, there as a very minimum keep that uh, was merging uh, things from happening. And uh, that, that would just be a minimum, and we really struggle to get WashDOT to uh, agree to that. And uh, what probably have, needs to happen even more so, though, is them to be looking at improvements, which they claim they don't have in their budget right now. That's where Doug was kind of alluding to that uh, we really need to come up with maybe dedicated uh, bus lanes to that particular area to get people to and from the station. And that's an area that, that you know, that potentially we could come up with stimulus projects for, but that's the type of improvements that we think would probably need to be happening to actually get the best uh, speed and reliability to the station would be a, a dedicated bus lanes in that particular area. And that hasn't been discussed at this point with uh, Sound Transit because they still have their budget for it at this point. And I also will be a little bit more specific with this question. My biggest concern is that we are going to be bringing traffic from other south cities to exactly the, the, that transportation site. So we are going to be having a, 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 a big volume of cars coming at peak hours to, to rent on just because they want to reach the transit center. So I'm wondering if they are find, looking for solutions to get uh, uh, I don't know, park and rides or others in Covington or other areas that they don't have to drive all the way to rent on to bring more cars to the city. Well, they are enhancing, I, I believe, the parking in other stations to the south of here, but I haven't heard about any talk of additional um, park and rides in areas like in southeast King County, other uh, places like that where people are coming to. At this point, uh, most of the agencies are really emphasizing building more parking uh, and getting more people into to transit to access these stations. That's been their, more of their emphasis and less about uh, parking rides and things like that. Thank you, Jim. And once again, Council, Council Member Prince, this has to be a holistic approach. So I, I wonder if you guys have had this kind of conversation at the board level. Um, about about um, parking in general and parking and finding where places for other fo um, other cities for there to be parking structures. Is for other cities, to to other cities in South King County to be able to mitigate also their needs, which at the same time will be helping this area. Um, I know that um, I'd have to go back through and look at all the projects on SC three. Um, I know that they. I don't think there are any other parking garage, parking structures that aren't related to bus rapid transit in SC3, but I'd have to go back and look um, and I can do that. But we've not even, we've not had any of those discussions yet, um, at least not since I've been on the board. Um, and I'm sure as we get down the line, I mean, I've been to two in-person board meetings and one over go-to meeting. And we haven't had any of those conversations yet. Thank you, Council Member Prince. Madam President. Council Member O'Haller. Yes, thank you. Um, I I agree with you. I think um, I think it's not really a question of us needing to provide parking for the entire South End to come and use the new transit center. I agree with you that I think there needs to be some kind of a shuttle system or something so that it's not all single occupancy vehicles coming up 167 and trying to get into our little 
Rainier and Grady parking structure, which is, I believe, supposed to be for our residents. So um, having a conversation about a shuttle, uh, additional parking rights and shuttling, I think, I think it's worth having a conversation. Thank and you. I, so, I'm sorry, uh, Madam President. And I will mention now, if you look at our current transit center and our current parking garage, that is currently, and I believe some years ago, we did a zip code study on the cars that were going into that. Most of those cars that were going into that into that parking garage were coming, originating from outside of Renton as well. So that is every parking structure you can find in the county has that issue. That's not an issue unique to us. Yes, we need to figure out what we can do to deal with it, but Kent's having that issue, Auburn's having that issue, every city in the county that has a parking structure has that issue. And King County Metro is, is a, trying to address this issue with their rapid rides in particular uh, to try to get more and more people to use those for trips down to the station. For example, a rapid ride line I uh, going through the south end of Renton to be able to collect people along that particular corridor and bring them to the station as well. And so there's, there's efforts being done uh, more so by actually King County Metro, uh, in particular trying to do different uh, type of programs like they call it the VIA program where people can actually call up a, you know, a ride like an Uber ride and it's subsidized by either King County or South Transit to bring people to the light rail station. So there are programs that are you know, pilot programs out there that they're looking at to try to get more people out of their cars and take transit actually to the stations too. Um, thank you. Uh, does any council member has another question? Okay, uh, Jim, uh, when is, I know that now with the whole thing about the COVID-19 and the, and, and that the budget right now, uh, it's been reduced, reduced. Uh, what was the projection, the project timing that they will have ready this uh, transit center and uh, complete the study? I, 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 I don't remember. Yeah, they're still on, on schedule for our project. It was supposed to be completed in 2024. A lot of the infrastructure being built for us is being built by Washington as part of the I-405 Bellevue to Renton project. So a lot of the infrastructure, like the 44th uh, interchange inline station, will be built by Washington. So a lot of it's being constructed by Washington, and they're on the 2024 time frame, as well as Sound Transit. So far, they, they haven't told us there's going to be any delays in our particular projects. The only delays are happening uh, north of Bellevue and along 522. Uh, one of my biggest concerns is that they're going to have to start prioritizing which projects uh, have they had and if they have had that conversation, what what can, can do that to make sure that our projects are not left again behind or put being on those priority projects that are going to be moving on. Madam President, you kind of broke up for a second. Can you repeat what you said? Oh, I'm sorry. I was. Is how, how are we going to be assured that our projects aren't cut if they have less funding? Is that what your question was? Yes. Okay. So I, I guess I, I can't necessarily assure, uh, you know, I'd be up to the Sound Transit Board to make that particular decision on what the projects got cut if they, uh, if they had to have some type of funding constraints put into place. So. I'm not sure that I'd be in a position to, to answer that particular question at this time. And I would say at this, at this time, there's not, none of the written, there's been no conversation on any of the written projects uh, and their timelines being moved. Um, and uh, that was before COVID-19. Um, none of us know at this time what the impact of COVID-19 and what it's uh, done to the economy, what impact that's gonna have. But as of right now, as far as I know, uh, there's been no talk about any of the written projects being delayed. And that was, I had a conversation with Peter Rogoff about that last week. Thank you, Council Member Prince. Um, and what I heard that you say, Jim, is that the plan for the BRT, as far as we're concerned, is still on a schedule. Uh, Except for north of uh, Bellevue, from Bellevue to Linwood, that particular segment won't be operational until 2025, so they come out with now. And then segments of 522 BRT are being delayed to 2025. 
Thank you, Jim. Any more questions? So, okay, so are we clear right now what are the priorities that uh, we have for sound transit? So Council Member Prince could, could advocate uh, for those priorities. Uh, is that, is, uh, I don't know, Jim, if we have like a list or a, or a, or a I don't know, a proposal or what are the main things that, that right now we want to make sure that are on that table at all time? Yeah, I think we've got pretty much uh, in this particular issue paper, I guess the one thing that I'll follow up on is if you would like us to explore with Sound Transit the potential for heavy rail along the current DNSF tracks, we certainly could add that as well. Is that something you want us to look at as a key priority or, or not? This is uh, Council, Council President, this is Valerie O'Halloran. Yeah, Council Member O'Halloran. Um, I just want to make a clarifying statement on the Renton Spur, if that's what you're referring to, Jim, is uh, it doesn't have to be heavy rail. It could be um, uh, what they call diesel multiple units, which is more uh, self-powered carriages like they have in um, uh, Oregon and California. It's, uh, uh, it's called a diesel multiple unit, and it doesn't require a... Um, uh, I'm losing my words here. It doesn't require an engine. The engines are on board the carriages. Okay. So it wouldn't be considered heavy rail. Okay. Thank you. And Jim, can we make sure that, um, because they're probably going to be cutting on funds and all the time we are talking about that we, you know, we have been projected protecting since day one the quality of the BRT and as well as the as the quality of the parking lot. That's also a priority that, you know, they deliver the projects uh, to be um, as effective as they should be. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Madam President. Yeah, Council Member McKibber. Yeah, I, I love the idea that uh, Council Member Halloran put forward. Uh, the only thing I would just want to make sure that's in there, and I, I believe this was within her intent, is that was a an interim solution to the long-term vision of light rail, if I understood correctly, uh, versus uh, this instead of that. Um, and if that's that's the case, I think that's fine. I would. The only thing I want to make sure we make clear is that you know we don't start asking for this, and it's similar to BRT on 405, uh, that that's what we get instead. If that's not what we want long term. Madam President. Council Member Prince. I just, I want to be clear because we're talking about this being a priority. We're asking Sound Transit to do something that's right now in, not in their book of business uh, for renting. And if that's what we're saying we want to do, then that's fine. I just want to make sure that I'm being clear that that's what we're asking for. Because right now they don't do that. They run the sounder train, they do the express bus, uh, they do the light rail. If we're saying that we want them to do something on that small, that spur in Renton. I just want to make sure I'm being clear on what we're asking for. The alternative Thank would be to actually uh, include that, this type of work, and when we do the light rail study, we could be looking at that as a, you know, a potential interim solution. Uh, okay. Rather than ask for it you know, right at this time, we could potentially just put it in a study to look at it when we're looking at light rail. Is, is this an option we could look at? To be okay. Madam President, Council Member Corman. Yeah, yeah. I, I like, I like the idea too, Valerie's idea. But I am really concerned, having, uh, having been with the I four hundred five Executive Committee all those years, and um, seeing how the the BRT, which was supposed to be the interim, you know, sort of turned into the the plan for Sound Transit. I, I really want to say I am concerned about what uh, Mr. McGurvin expressed that um, um, we we might accidentally have this you know it, something on that line become the it, their their target and the problem is uh, using that um, that existing rail spur line you know there could maybe be four trips a day or something before it starts interfering with um, the, the freight for for Boeing and Ultimately, we obviously want a light rail that does 10-minute headways. So, um, so we, I just would want to be 
pretty careful. I, I think maybe the way Jim suggested doing it, um, I, I think it's I think it's good, very good to be resourceful and every single um, opportunity to. I, I think Sound Transit would share our interest in looking at every opportunity, but um, let's do it in a way where we don't jeopardize the the main uh, prize, which is to have the the BRT functioning in 2024 and then not too far after getting the light rail line. Madam President. Councilman Brojala. I agree. Thank you. I think the, the most important message here is that, uh, of course, we want services that are effective for our residents. Uh, obviously, our residents are very disappointed uh, with the result of the ASTIC ST3, and I think uh, we want to hear them, and we we do know that our community is asking for more public transportation, that as a city, we have been building around uh, the idea that eventually we will be encouraging them to use massive transportation. So the whole purpose of this basically is that we are on top of this and we are going to be working very collaboratively with uh, all our the agencies. Um, understanding this is sound transit is different than Metro just for our constituents. Uh, and uh, and uh, Council, Mem Council Member Prince right now is in that table, uh, bring the voice of Renton, and that we do have priorities that we are gonna be working uh, to make sure that uh, they are taken care in consideration. Now, say that, I have been hearing what your concerns are, and I do understand that uh, this picture is looking completely different because the budget cuts and as well as how COVID-19 um, has put us in a position that is not as strong as we were expecting. But as long as we are uh, working very hard to, uh, to always have the same level of services that other cities are receiving in the area, I think we're gonna be in, the, in, the, in doing the job that we are um, being elected to do. Um, Madam President. Council Member uh, Corman. Yeah, I, I had another thought as well, which is that um, if if it does turn out that that 2028 timeline actually is the timeline for Sound Transit 4, I mean, that's obviously eight, eight years away and uh, hopefully COVID-19 is uh, in the rearview mirror by many, many years at that point. Um, and, and 2028 actually gives us four more planning years. Actually, it probably gives us about six more planning years than I thought we were going to have. Um, that I thought we were going to have to race to try and get something in 2024 because I'd heard rumors of that. But where I'm going with this is um, I think we don't want to, um, I mean, the, the, the idea of um, going from the Rainier Grady um, um, new transit center uh, on a spur line is really good. But I think if we're talking about a 2028 time frame, we should also at least leave the door open to having rail go, you know, planned for the whole up the east side at that point. Because we're talking eight years away just for the planning. Um, and, you know, this area is going to keep building out. So I guess I, I don't want to, I don't want to burden uh, Council Member Prince with with asking for the moon, but I guess I'd also ask them to, you know, to, 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 to keep an eye, to not accidentally close the door, as maybe Newcastle and South Bellevue start making a push to get the line, you know, coming all the way from Tuckwilla right up the east side. And, you know, we should be there saying, yeah, that, we, we like that idea too. Um, so for however we can keep that, that as a possibility, I think that would be worthwhile. I agree with that, Randy. Yeah, thank you. If I, uh, I know we're running out of time, Madam President. This is Doug Levy. Can I make a quick comment on the, the yes, yes, issue? Yes, please. Um, yes, please. I, I think we'll have to talk with Sound Transit about what is even structurally doable and where there is existing line that can even be used. Remember, that's the much of the line that had been used um, on the east side has been purchase for the East Ra East Side Rail Port or what we call East Trail. And I think Council Member Corman accurately noted that even in that BNS section through um, Renton, there is there is some usage for 
or freight for Boeing fuselages. So there may not be a lot of viable commuter rail options up and down the east side at this point. Um, obviously something we can check, double check with Sound Transit staff. Madam President. Uh, uh, Council Member, I can't see. Cormac, yeah. I, um, I cannot see you guys because yeah. it's really a small screen, but thank yeah, you very much. I, yeah, um, I was just going to say, yeah, Doug, Doug's right. I think the the rail line, the east east rail is probably not going to work for, for that. I guess I don't know. I don't want to close the door on anything, but I also want to be cautious about what we ask for. But um, I, I did want to say that when the um, the 405 Executive Committee talked in terms of BRT and that BRT was an interim solution. The, um, there was acknowledgement and I, I, I thought it made it into the formal plan, but if there, if there was going to be a rail on the, on the east side, the, the consensus was that it should be down the, um, the 405 um, median, down the middle of the 405 um, is a preferred you know, location that all the cities thought was the right location. Now, I know it's easier said than done, but um, but just so everybody's kind of coming from the same place. Um, and and I will say that I think by 2028, you know, t Newcastle will really be almost demanding that. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Council Member Coman, for bringing sure. that, because I do agree with you. I do remember that this was to be an interim solution, and I do, uh, do want to consider to... Uh, your idea of bringing the light rail all the way to the inside and dog just to let you know i had had this conversation about the using the inside rail corridor and the reasoning behind that they keep using as an excuse that because we're not going to use the inside rail corridor corridor that is not a corridor for us i i have debated this with them several times because if they are able to bring light rail everywhere i mean i'm telling you everywhere west south east across a, a lake how come they cannot plan for a light rail from from Bellevue to, to Renton and from Renton to Borean? I mean, they're supposed to be very smart engineers that they know how to do this. So I'm just putting it out there because I'm fully supporting the idea of Council Member Corman. Do I have any other Council Member that have a question or, a, or, or, or an opinion or concern about this topic? Yes, Council President. Council Member Ban. Yeah, I've been trying to raise my hands here. Um, so uh, I cannot see you. It's a, in my screen. Just I, I cannot see. I, I, I just first want to thank uh, J uh, Jim for uh, his presentation, and uh, you know this is very helpful. And, and I understand it's frustrating as far as the delay time, um, given COVID as well, and, and the uh, funding. Um, but just to, to for us to not get off track, I think with the. Um, priorities that we want council member prince to advocate for us i think this paper really illustrated you know the key priorities um and and i appreciate jim kind of laying it out there for us all um so that's all that, that i wanted to say thank you thank you very much um uh, council members do you have any more questions uh, or comments we have 10 minutes before i have to i can go to the next item which is an executive session so uh, or, or Doc, do you have any more to share with us? Doc Levy? Uh, no, no. Thank you. G Jim? No, okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Council Member Benedetti, do you have anything to, 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 to add to this conversation? Uh, I don't have anything to add, uh, only a thanks to um, Jim. Thank you so much for putting this together. The, the, the page really does outline a lot of, of what it is that we would like to see. Thank you. And like everyone else, I am disappointed with the 2028, but it is what it is. Thank you, Q Council Member Benedetti. So, Jim, uh, you did a very good job putting together these, these, um, this uh, presentation for us. Um, I will suggest uh, that um, we move this if the rest of the council, not move it because not a, it's not a motion, but I will suggest that this conversation keep uh, being um, a topic on the transportation committee 
if the rest of the council members are comfortable with that and if the chair of the transportation committee uh, uh, will like to do that. Good. Okay. That was a yes. So, yeah. <laughs> I can see that you have been doing Zoom for a long time because you know to do a lot of things that I don't know how to do. So, <laughs> um, so with that, uh, I don't know. Do I have an attorney on the line? Could I go to the to an executive session right now, or I have to wait until uh, six o'clock? All right, we can go to executive session now. We'll just need whoever's facilitating the meeting to. Okay. Uh, invite us okay. into a separate room. And I'll just I'll just say for you here that the purpose of the executive session is pursuant to RCW 4230-110, subsection 1I, to discuss uh, with legal counsel potential litigation. Okay, so I will make a motion. So okay. I move that the council uh, recess into executive session for 40 minutes to consider potential lit litigation, RCW 42.30, Point one ten, number one I. We will not be taking a final action, and the committee of the whole will be adjourned when the executive session ends. Once again, thank you, Jim, and everybody else. Second. I second. <laughs> thank you.